Alright, hello everyone, what's going on? Welcome to XPMing. What the f... What happened here? Did... Did one of my... Wait, who, who the heck is that? Hi. Hi, I'm Saito, my hero for fun. But I think I'll end it here for now because there's not really much I could do. I was planning on doing a little bit more, but Frieza was a little bit too hard. Uh, so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Three years. It's been a long time. In a way, I guess you could say I'm a different person now, but unfortunately not different in a good way. What I'm going to be talking about now is something that needs to be taken seriously, so you won't be getting any goofiness from me or any overreactions. You'll be getting the true serious side of me. I'll be talking about where I've been and the future of this channel. Now why this is going to be a serious video is because I'm going to be talking about depression and a little bit about suicide, and how it has affected me over the past three years. I've thought about making this video for a while now, but I have been putting it off mainly because it would have been a very depressing video. But I have found that talking about it, telling a story, is like a form of therapy, and I actually feel better after talking about it. But with COVID-19 out there, I can't attend any therapy, so I thought this would be the next best thing, and I also thought that this would be a good learning experience for any of you out there that are getting into the workforce. Some may find what I'm going to be talking about embarrassing, but I would have to disagree with that. The social stigma behind depression is one of the reasons people don't go to get help and may end in suicide. So without further ado, let's go back in time to 2017. I had just finished my fifth year in college, which was a complete disaster. We were guinea pigs, it was the first time the course was run, and it ended so poorly they had to give us our money back for the second semester. And after that is where things started to go downhill for me. After a few weeks with little to no money after college, I finally got a job. It wasn't animation, but it was close enough to the point where I thought it would be a step in the door. For obvious reasons, I won't name the company, but it was small. I found out during the first day I was the only employee, and over the next few months I would learn why. The pay wasn't great, it was basically commission work, or well, whenever they would pay me that is. They promised me animation work later on, which, spoiler alert, never happened. I worked as a professional wedding video editor, and when I say professional, I mean professional. These weren't pictures fading in and out. These were actual movies. The company that I worked for would edit wedding videos that another company would film from beginning to end. I had to sync different cameras, switch between them, cut in audio, replace another camera's audio when it was damaged, and in the end the videos were about two hours long. Each wedding video took me about a week to complete, and I only got paid $200 for each of them. I needed a source of income, and it was hard enough to get this job, so I decided to deal with it. However, in time I learned to regret that choice. As the days passed, I noticed the boss was getting a little more comfortable with me, but not in a good way. He began to get a little more aggressive with his critiques. He began to insult my intelligence asking why I thought this was a good idea, that's really bad, are you even trying? It also didn't help that the boss would pace back and forth behind me. It only made me more and more stressed. Every time I accidentally clicked the wrong thing or got a result I wasn't expecting, I would hear a very aggravated exhale coming from behind me. But there wasn't just one boss I had to deal with. The company was run by two brothers. One would oversee 90% of everything, and the other was in charge of the wedding videos. I contemplated quitting numerous times, but I needed something on my resume that said more than just YouTube partner. My friends also pointed out that it would look bad on my resume to show that I only worked for a month. On a side note, they actually apologized to me for that now. My bank account was also a great motivator for me to keep working, but I decided to secretly look for another job as I continued to work and earn some income. As the months went on, Others would get hired and quit within a week. There was one guy that was there for a half a day. He gave the boss one of my favorite lines. Maybe you would prefer someone with more experience than me. The look on the boss's face was priceless. Now, I had been suffering from depression since college, but my time working for this company only made it worse. And so I began to take antidepressants to help me deal with it. 
Eventually, it became hard to take the verbal harassment, and I got a lot more confrontational with him. I remember one day in particular, he yelled at me for a shot that I used. He said it looked really bad. Why did you think this was a good idea? Look at it, it makes no sense. Why didn't you pick a better angle that isn't shaking? Of course, I tried to explain why, but he didn't let me explain until he was finished yelling at me for an hour. I told him there wasn't another angle, but then he said, No, I told you many times, look at the footage, there's another angle. And so a couple minutes later, what a surprise, he couldn't find another angle. Did I get an apology from him for yelling at me and treating me like an idiot? No. I almost completely blew up on him that day. I could feel my face turning red. Now, I'll own up to it. Yes, I did make mistakes. I did miss some footage every now and then. But that's no excuse for an employer to yell and insult his employee. He could have saved time by mentioning it and then fixing it. Instead, he would yell at me for an hour. So I began working on a long, I guess you could say, con trick. Over the course of a few weeks, I talked the boss into letting me work from home. I made it sound like his idea, though. And it worked. I started working from home. I was free from him pacing back and forth behind me and yelling at me. However, it backfired on me. A day wouldn't go by where I would get a string of texts from him telling me, do this, do that, this is really bad, what were you thinking? I would be eating dinner, and I would hear my phone going off nonstop. It drove me crazy. I had to put my phone on silent. And then came the two hour long phone calls. The first hour was him yelling me about how bad of a job I did, and the rest is me telling him why I did what I did in the last wedding video. And now we jump to the climax of the story. It was about 13 days before Christmas, and he asked me to have three wedding videos done before Christmas. That's three weeks worth of wedding videos done in one week and six days. So me being the brainless yes man drone, I said, yeah, okay. In my defense, it wasn't a happy, yeah, okay. And so I did them. I went a few days without sleep, pulling all-nighters, and I had them done. Four days after Christmas, I got that fateful call. He spent an hour telling me these three wedding videos I did were a disaster. He said they were irredeemable, and he wanted me to do them all over again from scratch. That was it. I had reached my limit. I devolved into saying, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. I was about to lose it, but me being a goody two-shoe that wants everyone to like him, I didn't lose it on him. I got off the phone as fast as I could, and I started doing some deep breathing exercises. But then I noticed a pain start to come from my chest, and it only got worse. I started to feel lightheaded, and I'm pretty sure that I passed out. I mean, it was my only guess as to how it went from sitting in a chair to suddenly laying on the floor. Then my head started to pound. It felt like my head was literally pulsating and going to explode. I started to lose strength on my body, and I could barely move my arms and my legs. The pain in my chest continued to get worse, and then I started crying and saying words I didn't think existed in my vocabulary. I was there on the floor, bawling my eyes out and swearing with incredible pain in my chest and head. I thought I was having a heart attack, so I was rushed to the hospital where I found out that it wasn't a heart attack, but that I had had a nervous breakdown. I was met by a crisis counselor at the hospital where I told my story. The crisis counselor and doctor said if I continued to work for this company, I was going to die. And that was it. I quit. Or at least I had my mom call them because I was in no condition to talk to them. And so I had my antidepressant medication increased and got a new one. And so then I went into therapy. I got individual therapy and I went into group therapy where I met others with similar stories to mine. I didn't really have the money for it, but I needed it. As time went on, I learned some new quirks about myself. Hearing the sound of a phone would cause me to have a panic attack and the memories would flood back into my head. And my social anxiety only got worse as well. The guy in charge of the group therapy believes that I may have developed PTSD from this experience. I can't make or answer phone calls. If I do end up on the phone, I have a panic attack afterwards. But worst of all, I mentally can't work. Just making plans to go back to work 
caused me to have a panic attack. Sending in my resume gave me a panic attack, and I'm pretty sure I almost passed out. And that has been my life for the past two years. I have been stuck in this endless cycle of depression. If I hadn't had such a great family, I could have ended up on the streets by now. And with COVID-19 out there, I can't attend group therapy or even my individual therapy, as it's been all shut down because of the pandemic. So the moral of the story is, no, don't take shit like that if you're not being treated properly. Don't stay or contact HR. Unfortunately, the small company I worked for didn't have anything like that. In fact, there's technically no evidence that I even worked there for a year. All the payments were done off the books. I was told by many people that I have a strong case against these guys, but my nerves were shot. I just wanted to get away from them as soon as possible and never see them again. When I went to try and get my last payment from them, they berated me a bit, and I broke down and started crying right there in front of them. I had my mom there for support, and I'm glad I did, because when I started to cry, she grabbed my arm, pulled me up out of the office as quickly as possible, and said, we aren't going to get anywhere with them. And then I had a panic attack in the car. So once again, don't let what happened to me happen to you. It's only going to hurt you in the long run, as it has for me. I'm 26, and I have been unable to work for the past two years, which has resulted in me living with my mom. Great boyfriend material, am I right? As for the suicide topic, I want to start off by saying I haven't attempted to take my own life, but I'd be lying if I said the thoughts haven't popped into my head. I often find myself sitting at my computer desk asking myself, why do I try? What's the point? I'm going nowhere with my life. I'm a wreck. But being an atheist, I don't believe in an afterlife. So that kind of works in my favor because I don't want to disappear into nothing. So please, don't make the same mistake I did or else this could be your future. And this is only a summarized version of the story. I mean, I haven't even told you about the month I spent as a sort of stepfather. Or the 46 pounds I put on due to the stress eating from the job that I now call hell. Now looking to the future, and specifically this channel's future, I'm thinking about coming back. I mean, I want to start slowly getting back into things, but making YouTube videos again might actually help me with my recovery. I have thought about doing this for a while now. I talked about with Zara Maru a year ago about doing this, but the fear of being judged and criticized held me back. But as sensitive as I've become now, I still want to give it a try. Something to help me with my recovery. As for collabing with Zeshin and the others, I watched a few streams here and there, but I'm not sure if I would be very fun to collab with. Especially with the condition I'm currently in. I'm not much fun to be around in my current state. And finally, we have reached the end of this probably very long video. I know this wasn't much of a fun video, or if anyone will even watch this, but like I said, talking about it helps. So if I decide to come back to YouTube, then I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for listening.